Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So it's the start of a brand new month. It's July already, who would have thought it? So with it being the start of a new month and with it being Saturday the 1st, it's also the start of a brand new mission over on our Mission Inspiration Facebook group. This month we have guest mission controller Trish Rosima from South Africa who has graciously put together the prompt and the colour scheme and the words for inspiration for you to play with this month. Now remember, if you want to play along, all you have to do is to pop along to the Facebook group and just ask to join. Uh, I'll also put the link in the description area below. So before I get started, I'm going to play you the mission inspiration brief that Trish has put together, and then I'll get started on my art journal page for the month, and then I'll join with you again right at the end. Welcome Art Agent Specialists. This is Agent T, your mission controller for the month. Your mission for July, should you wish to accept it, is as follows. Step 1. Brayer 1 or all of the colours onto your page. Step 2. Collage napkin pieces over. Step 3. Add texture with found objects from around your home. Step 4. Drip or spray ink over the page. Step 5. Add a focal image of your choice. Step 6. Make splatters using an eyedropper or a pipette. Step 7. Doodle around the edges. And step 8. Finish off with all or only one of the words. Your colour scheme for the month is cyan, magenta and yellow. And the words are fun, relax, play, love and sun. This message will self-destruct in three seconds. Good luck! I'm starting today's art journal page in my large circle art journal. So to start off with I'm going to pull out my three colours that I want to use. So I have Coastal Walk, I have Lemon Meringue and I also have the Pink Marshmallow, all from Indigo Blue, all acrylic paints from Indigo Blue. So those are my three of the suggested colour scheme that Trish has put together. So to start off with, step number one is to bray one or all of the colours all over your page. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the blue, first of all, that beautiful coastal walk colour, add some to my glass cutting mat, and then grab my brayer, and then start applying it to my page. And because my page is made from 140 pound or 300 GSM watercolour cardstock, I'm not going to get a perfect run with that brayer. I am going to get some of that texture showing through, which is exactly what I want. Now I'm going to apply all three colours to the background of my art journal page, which means I will have to clean off my brayer in between each colour application. And because it's acrylic paint, it is important that you do it very, very quickly because it does dry quite quick. Uh, and if you leave it on, then you just end up with a really gummy brayer. So this is the lemon meringue. So again, I'm going to do the same thing, take some of the paint from the pot, add it to my glass cutting mat, and then apply it to the page. So next is the marshmallow pink. Now I should have shook the bottle up before using it or before taking the lid off. It's the first time I've used this paint and then I end up making a complete mess all over, but it's okay 
because it does wipe up and it does clean up. And as it's a little bit runny, I'm just applying it directly to the page this time. And then I'm going to grab the brayer and then once I've wiped my fingers, that is, and then I'm going to just run that brayer through the paint and then blend it in with that yellow. It's all messy fun. It's what we want. So time for a quick clean up and then it's time to grab the heat gun and get that page completely dry before moving on to step number two. And step number two is to collage napkin pieces over your page. So I have a napkin that I've removed the two back plies from. So this is just the top one. I'm just using a water brush. I'm drawing around the pieces on the napkin that I actually want. So I'm going to um, just tear along where I've added the water because it makes it a lot easier to handle if you do it this way. And then I can collect all the pieces that I want ready to glue down onto my journal page. Because the edges of my napkin fragments are now wet, they are quite fragile, so I'm just going to grab my heat gun and just gently warm them, just to dry them, before I apply them to the page. So using the matte medium collage page from Aileen's, I'm just going to add some to the page, spread it around with the brush and then grab my napkin fragments stick them down and then go over the top again to seal them in place. And that's where my collage page runs out. Bottle is now empty. Luckily, I do have a pot of matte paper Mod Podge to hand that I can use. So switching over the mediums, I can carry on sticking down my napkin fragments to the page. Once all my napkin fragments are glued down, I can grab my heat gun, give it a nice gentle warming to make sure it's all nice and dry before moving on to step number three. And step number three is to add texture with household items. So I have a cardboard toilet paper tube and a piece of bubble wrap or buble wrap. I'm going to use white gesso from Indigo Blue. And I'm going to apply some of the gesso onto the bubble wrap directly with the brush and then I'm going to make marks on my page just by pressing down the bubble wrap around um, the page in strategic places or random, depending on which way you think about it. So happy with the bubble wrap, it's now time to use the toilet paper tube. I'm just going to load up the edge and then go around adding those circle shapes again, just randomly around the page to add some texture and interest into the background of my page.
And then once I'm happy, just have a quick tidy up and put away with the paint, and then I can give it a quick blast with the heat gun. So step number four is to drip or spray ink color over your page. So I have the white linen ink spray from Dilutions. Now again, this is the first time I've used this, so I've given it a really, really good shake up. And I've got a, um, now I believe this is used for cross stitching, but I use it just for creating patterns and texture on a page. So I'm just going to spritz through to create a nice kind of uh, circular dotty pattern into the background. And I do realize that I have covered up some of my birds, but don't panic, that's what baby wipes were invented for. Not for babies, but for clearing up paint. That's better. So happy with the way those Dilutions spritzes look, so it's time just to give them a quick dry and then we can move on to step number five. So step number five is to add a focal image of your choice. Now I have this beautiful picture of a lady taken from the um, Farmer's Wife magazine. I believe it dates from around about 1936 and I've already printed her on my inkjet printer and cut her out. I'm going to stick her down using the multi-purpose spirit glue from Colol. You may be wondering why I'm not going to stick her down with the matte medium uh, Mod Podge. It's because the minute I add any of that Mod Podge to the page, it's going to disturb and move all that white dilutions. I'm not going to do it. So I'm sticking her down with the spirit glue instead. That way I don't disturb any of that white in the background. And this is the perfect opportunity while that glue is drying just to go around the outside of my page and remove any excess bits of paper that are hanging over. Time to move on to step number six, which is to add splatters using an eyedropper or pipette. So I'm going to use the white linen, once again, the Dilutions ink spray. This time I'm going to grab a pipette that I have. Now it's a little bit dirty, so I do need just to clean the inside first. So I've just grabbed some water and I'm just going to flush it out with some clean water from my spray bottle. And then I can pick up some of that Dilutions white ink and add some blobs around my page. I'm going to do some larger blobs to start off with and then I'm going to fill in with some smaller ones. Once I'm happy with the dots and splodges of that ink, I'm going to let it dry naturally. I'm not going to use the heat gun because I don't want to create any runs and if I add any heat to it, I may blow that white ink across the page and I don't want any runs in it. I want them to stay exactly where they are. So I'll let it sit there and dry for a good two hours and that did the trick. So we can move on to step number seven, which is to doodle around the edges. So I have a Pigma number no. five Micron pen. This is an archival ink from Sakura. And I've also dug out my food ball pen too, which I will use a little bit later. So that's the food ball. So I'm going to just put that to one side, but primarily just use the Pigma Micron number no. five pen to add the doodles. So I'm going to go all the way around the outside of my page, and then I'm going to add some scribbly doodles into the center of the page, around the birds, and around my main focal image of my lady.
So adding the doodles around the birds and around my main focal point helps to pull the entire page together. So you have your scribbles and your doodles around the outside, but you also have the same kind of decoration on the inside of your page too. It just helps to unify and pull the whole page together as a whole. So I'm pretty much happy with my scribbles and doodles. I don't think I'm going to add any more to it. So it's now time to move on to step number eight. And the final step is to finish with one or all of the words. But I'm just going to use the word fun. Now I've already pre-typed out and printed uh, my quote for the page. And this is the Saffron Archival Ink from Ranger. And using an ink blending foam, I'm just going to go around the edge of my torn piece. Now I've deliberately torn it rather than cut it because I don't want perfect edges because there's no fun in perfection. So I'm going to create a little layered cluster for my quote block to sit on. So I'm just adding that saffron ink around the edge and I'm going to grab a piece of um, book text. And I'm also going to just tear a little block of book text, just a little bit larger than my word block. And again, I'm going to rough up the edges and then using the saffron ink again, I'm just going to go around the edges of that book text um, to make sure that it, it, it fits in so it all matches. I also want to create a darker layer underneath the book text too, just to give it a little bit of pop off the page. So to do that, I'm going to grab a sheet of six by six um, patterned paper that was sent to me in Happy Mail and again I'm going to tear a piece just slightly larger than the book text and again add the yellow ink just to the edges and then I'm going to glue all three layers together. The beauty of using the spirit glue is that it doesn't grab straight away. You do have a few minutes worth of wiggle room so you can maneuver your pieces into position to the best place possible and then you can let it sit and dry. So now that my quote block is in place, I can just go back around and add a few more of those black unifying squiggly lines around the word block just to blend it into place. And then when I'm happy with it, I'm going to switch over to the food ball pen and then I can sign it and date it. So I'm just going to grab the mission slide and then I'm going to go through ticking off, making sure that I have covered all the steps, use the colors and one of the words. So that means mission accomplished.
So what a fun set of prompts that Trish has put together for us this month. I really enjoyed creating my art journal page using those steps and that colour scheme. So don't forget, if you want to play along, all you have to do is to visit us on the Facebook group, the Mission Inspiration Facebook group. You can also find the link in the description area below. So if you have enjoyed watching the video today, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. A huge thank you to Trish for putting those prompts together, and I'm sure everyone will have such fun playing along with them. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again real soon. Bye for now.